Good health to all from Rexall. It's the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, presented by the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist with a welcome from all 10,000 of us. The 10,000 independent druggists who have made the word Rexall part of our own store names. You can always tell us by the orange and blue Rexall sign on our windows, but our best identification is that we carry the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. Many of you have already learned for yourselves the exceptional quality of these famous products, like uh, Rexall aspirin, for example. Here is the aspirin that, by laboratory test, disintegrates faster than any other leading brand tested. Remember that, please, the next time you need aspirin. And remember also, it's quality like that we family druggists are talking about when we tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. And now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Phil Harris Alice Fay Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Fay and Phil Harris. <laughs> Mr. Scott of Rexall and his wife are going on a motor trip for a few days. However, they have a very valuable French poodle named Madame Bovary, <laughs> whom they would like to leave in good hands while they're gone. As we look in, we find Mr. Scott on the phone asking Phil if he'll take care of the dog while they're away. What's that, Mr. Scott? Uh, Mr. Scott, we seem to have a bad connection. What did you say? I said, I'm taking Mrs. Scott on a motor trip for a few days, and I'd like to leave Madame Bovary with you while I'm gone. <laughs> Madame Bovary? Gee, Mr. Scott, I'd like to help you out, but I'm a married man. <laughs> Gee whiz, Alice is a little touchy about having other women around the house. I ain't going to... Harris, Harris, Madame Bovary is a dog. Oh, well, in that case, leave her with Ramley. He don't care what they look like. <laughs> Give me strength. <laughs> Look, cornball. <laughs> Madame Bovary is a dog. You know, bow wow, woof woof, arf, arf. Oh, Scotty, you've been working too hard. <laughs> Harris, listen closely. I'll spell it for you. I want to leave a D O. No, that'll get him more confused than ever. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I, I've got it. Mr. Harris, when your wife is mad at you, where does she put you? In a doghouse. Cut it in half and you've got it. <laughs> That's what I want to leave with you. A dog. Well, why didn't you say so instead of getting me involved in one of them double in tandem routines? <laughs> I don't know nothing about what you're talking about. We'd be glad to take of, care of her. She's a nice dog. Bring her over. Thanks. I'll be right over with her. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Scott. Who called, Phil? Oh, it's Mr. Scott, honey. He's taking his wife on a motor trip, and he wants to leave his dog with us. Oh, that'll be nice for the children having a dog around. Yeah. Well, if that Scotty's coming over with that dog, I won't be able to finish painting this chair right now. Well, you better put the paint away now. I'll put the paint can away later. You know, Phil, we should have bought the girls a dog for Christmas. Frankie promised them one, but instead he gave them that horrible, uncouth gift. Hold it, Mercedes. <laughs> What's uncouth about a pool table? <laughs> well, I don't want it in the house, and I'm going to tell Frankie, so where is he? He's in the den with the kids. Said he was going to help them with their homework. I'll call him. Hey, Remley, come in here a minute, will you? All right, Curly, I'll be right with you. Okay, Phyllis, it's your shot. <laughs> Try the six ball in the side pocket, and this time, don't cheat. <laughs> Keep one foot on the floor. Now, remember, you each owe me $3 so far. <laughs> when we started, you said we were playing for fun. Well, that was before I was sure I could beat you. <laughs> okay, now, stop stalling and chalk up. All right. Uncle Frankie, how do I make this shot? Well, that's a cinch. 
Put a little English on the cue ball, kiss her off the seven, bank it off the corner cushion, you get it right into the side pocket. <laughs> it's an impossible shot. She'll never make it. Well, I'll try. Here goes. <laughs> Little wise guy. <laughs> well, Phyllis and I won that game. Now it's your turn to pay up. All right. Here's 50 cents in play money. I don't get it, Uncle Frankie. When we win, you pay us in play money. But when you win, we have to pay you in real money. How come? Fortunes of war, my child. <laughs> now, if you kids will excuse me, I'll go see what your daddy wants. Girlie? Hey, do you want to see me, Curly? I want to see you, Frankie. It's about the pool table that uh -oh, you Uh-oh, uh-oh, hold it a minute. That must be Mr. and Mrs. Scott. What are the Scotts coming here for? They're going away on a trip, and they're stopping by for a minute. Excuse us, Frankie. Yeah. Uh, hello, Harris. Mrs. Harris? Oh, hello, Mr. Scott. Come right on in. Well, where's Mrs. Scott? Uh, she's at home. I'm picking her up later. Well, here's Madame Bovary. Ah, uh, hiya, Poochie. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, oh, she's a cute little thing. Curly, does the old test tube believe yet? Oh, hi, Scotty. <laughs> oh, it's him. Hello, Remley. It's good to see you. <laughs> Thanks. It's good to see you, too. You're looking fine, Mr. Scott. <laughs> well, Mrs. Scott. <laughs> You're looking your usual charming self. <laughs> nice to see you again. <laughs> She's got a cold, eh? <laughs> Remley, one more nasty... Oh, no, no, it's just a mistake, Mr. Scott. Frankie can't see too well. He's wearing his nearsighted head today. <laughs> Look, Frankie, this is a dog. It isn't Mrs. Scott. Harris, I hardly think the identification is necessary. <laughs> As for you, Remley, this is the beginning of a new year. So why don't you get it off to a good start by doing away with yourself? <laughs> now, Mrs. Harris, I have to be running along now. Oh, I'll see you to the door, Mr. Scott. All right, so long, Scotty. Come on, Frankie, let's take this dog in and show it to the kids, huh? Oh, uh, by the way, Mrs. Harris, I want to leave this dog whistle with you. Yes. Incidentally, don't think the whistle's broken when you blow it, because you won't hear it, but the dog will. Oh, Mr. Scott, you've been standing too close to Frankie. <laughs> I know I sound like him, but this is a supersonic whistle, and it's too high-pitched for the human ear, but a dog can hear it plainly. Oh, by the way, Mrs. Harris, yes. I won't be here for the program Sunday, but I'll try to listen in. I'd hate to miss your song. Oh, I'd hate to have you miss it, too, and just to make sure you don't, I'll sing it now. <laughs> Bye-bye, baby Remember you're my baby When they give you the eye And just to show that I care I will write and declare That I'm on the loose But I'll stay on the square I'll be lonely But even though I'm lonely no other guy So I'll be gone for a while I know that I'll be smiling With my baby by and by And declare that though on the loose, you are still on the square. I'll be lonely, but send that rainbow to me, then my shadows will fly. Though you be gone for a while, I know that I'll be smiling with my baby by and by. That's the number.
remember I'm... How do you like that? He drove off right in the middle of my song. Oh, well, as long as he sends the check every week, who cares? <laughs> I'd better put this dog whistle in a safe place. I wonder if it really works. I gotta try it. <laughs> dog heard it, but I didn't. Mr. Scott was right. It can't be heard by a human being. I'd better put it on the mantel so I'll know where it is. Well, it's a quarter to 12. I'd better prepare lunch. Hey, Alice, where are those instructions that Mr. Scott gave you? I think this dog... Alice! Ah, well, I'll find them myself. I think she put them up on the mantel. Hey, I never saw this whistle before. Must belong to the kids. I wonder what it sounds like. Must be broken. Maybe you have to blow it harder. <laughs> Who's blowing that darn whistle in here? <laughs> well, I'm blowing it, but... You heard it blow? Yeah. That's the shrillest sound I ever heard in my life. But Frankie, the whistle's broken. Look, I'll show you. my eardrums? <laughs> but I didn't hear nothing. I... Frankie. My ears ain't working. I must be losing my hearing. Nah, it's nothing serious. Some people are nearsighted. You just happen to be near-eared. <laughs> this is no time for jokes. Bill, lunch is ready. Hey. <laughs> I got awful news for you. From now on, when you whisper sweet nothings in my ear, that's what it's gonna be. <laughs> Nothing. Well, what are you talking about? I'm losing my hearing, honey. I've been blowing this whistle and I don't hear a sound. Of course you don't. It's a supersonic whistle. It can't be heard by human beings. Only by dogs. <laughs> oh. Well, thank goodness I'm all right. I didn't hear it, and Remley said he heard... <laughs> Remley. What are you staring at me for? Just because I heard the whistle doesn't mean that I... I... I, 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 I... <laughs> hey, Curly, if only dogs can hear it and I heard it, it must mean that I... Take it I... easy. Take down, Rex. Uh... <laughs> Frankie carrying on so. Alice, I got something amazing to tell you. When I blew this dog whistle, Frankie heard it. Somehow that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Honey, don't you understand? What did you say about the whistle? I said a human being can't hear it. But Frankie heard it. So? <laughs> what do you mean, so? This is awful. If I can hear like a dog, there must be something wrong with me. Maybe you're part Airedale. <laughs> Don't be a funny man, part Airedale. I'll have you know I'm just as human as anybody. I'll be right in, dear. No! <laughs> oh, Curly, this All is terrible. right, take it easy, Remley. Take it easy. <laughs> just quiet down a minute now. Take it easy. You're nervous. Hmm. I'll soothe your nerves by singing something appropriate for a man in your condition. Oh. How about trees? <laughs> Hold it, wait a minute. Come to think of it, I got just a tune for you, Remley. Now sit back on your haunches, cock your ears, and listen to your master's voice. I recommend to every one of you who continue to do the things you do. Apply the fundamental and let the incidental go by. On the basic, firm philosophy Do it naturally, like it ought to be Apply the fundamental and let the incidental go by When old man 
trouble starts in hounding your doorstep And he's got his grip around you, brother That's the time you'd better watch your step Consequently, I recommend you Take this interview and apply to Everything you do and you will find your knowledge Is more than any college could do for you Cause it's only elemental to apply the fundamental And let the incidental go by To every one of you who continue to do the things you do, apply the fundamental and let the incidental go by. Stand on a basic, firm philosophy, do it naturally, like it ought to be. Apply the fundamental and let the incidental go by. When old man trouble starts in hounding your doorstep And he's got his grip around you, brother That's the time you'd better get more hair Consequential, I beg you take this little interview And apply it to everything you do And you will find your knowledge is more than any college could do for you, cause it's only elemental to apply the fundamental and let the incidental go by. Bye bye, F U N D. I don't know how to spell it, but let the incidental go by. Now I know what's wrong with my ears, Curly. I always stand too close to you when you sing. <laughs> hey, Curly, do you think maybe there's something in my ear that's causing my strange affliction? Could be. Maybe you got a tick in there. <laughs> hey, hold still, Remley. I'll look in your ear and see. All over here. Hmm. Kind of dark in there. <laughs> Wait till I light a match. Now, <laughs> uh, let me see now. Hey, don't hold a match so close to my ear. Will, will you? you hold still? I want to study All this. Right. I got three, is anybody... Well, it's about time somebody set fire to Mr. Remley. <laughs> <laughs> well, the alcohol and him, he'd make a beautiful blaze. Will you keep quiet, Julius. Now, hold still, Frankie. All right. Hmm. I don't see nothing in your left ear, Remley. Well, come over here and look in his right ear. I see something astounding in here. What do you see? The light shining through from his left ear. <laughs> Julius, you can see the light shining through. <laughs> Julius, you mean... Frightened you. A bat just flew out of me. <laughs> Julius, one more crack out of you and I'll... Uh, I'll spill this can of paint over you. Keep your shirt on. What are you looking at his ear for anyway, Mr. Harris? Well, kid, Mr. Remley has a very strange affliction. You see, he hears like a dog. Hey, this guy's a regular menagerie. <laughs> what do you mean, menagerie? He hears like a dog, eats like a pig, and drinks like a fish. <laughs> Does he have any brothers or sisters? 
Yeah, he's one of a litter of five. <laughs> Let's see, there was Prince, King, Rover... Uh... Uh, 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 Mr. Lemley, please don't bark while us humans is talking. <laughs> that does it. You're getting this paint can right on your head. Yeah, take that. Oh, Remley, look what you got now. You got that red paint all over the dog. How am I going to explain this to Mr. Scott? How his dog got red? Tell him his French poodle joined the Communist Party. Come <laughs> <laughs> <Hello>, on, fellas. <laughs> Lovely kid. Yeah. He's a grand boy. He's got all the charm of an old man's knee. <laughs> oh, Remley, now look. Just take a look at that dog. He's covered with red paint. What are we going to do? If Scotty ever sees his dog like this, I'm a cinch to lose my job. Now, we got to get the paint off of her hair. Well, look take at that. it easy, will you? We'll get it off. Oh, sure, we'll All we have it. to do is... You go answer the phone. I'll get all the right, paint off of the right. dog. Let's see... Where does Curly keep his electric razor? <laughs> okay, stop shivering, Pooch. There you are. Hey, you look great, kid. Not a hair on hey, you. Hey, Remley, you look... I got news for you. We're cooked. That was Mr. Scott on the phone. He had to postpone his trip, and he's coming over to get his... St Remley, where'd you get that plucked chicken? <laughs> That's Scotty's dog. I shaved all her hair off. Oh, no. Oh, a nude French poodle? <laughs> Somehow she looks indecent. Throw a rug or a kimono or something over her. <laughs> I think she looks very attractive. Only to you, Ren Tin Tin. <laughs> Frankie, if Scotty sees his dog like this, he's going to raise the roof. Her fancy hairdo is the most important part of a dog. I know that, and when Scotty gets here, she'll have hair. <laughs> Hand me that bottle of glue. <laughs> you mean you're going to paste the hair back on a dog? Oh, Curly, don't get hokey. <laughs> Besides, there's paint on the old hair. I'm going to paste this on. Looks like poodle hair, but it's much more luxurious. Yeah, it is. What is that? Alice's Persian lamb muff. <laughs> I know what I'm doing every minute. Frankly, <laughs> will you listen to me? You can't do that. It's too late. It's already cut, measured, and ready to fit. Now hold the dog still while I paste it oh, on. Oh, Remley, why do you always get... Well, that's all we got left to do now, and I'll tell you something. We got to hurry, Frankie. Mr. Scott will be here any minute. Now, look, do you remember how her... Fancy hairdo look. Stop worrying, will you? I'll put it on just the way it was. You'd better put it on. <laughs> yeah. Well, she's all pasted, Curly. How does she look? I don't know, Frankie. Didn't she have a tuft of hair on, on top of her head? No. It was under her chin, just the way I got it. <laughs> well, maybe you're right. Hmm? But is it supposed to be shaped like a Van Dyke? <laughs> she looks like an ad for Bach beer. <laughs> I think she looks swell. Notice how deftly I applied these clumps of fur here and there. Gives her a look of studied carelessness. <laughs> well, maybe she looks all right, but wait a minute. Hmm? What's that limp strip of fur hanging down the back of her? Oh, that's her new tail. <laughs> new tail? Mm hmm. What happened to her old one? Well, while I was working on her, she kept swishing it in my face, so I glued it to her stomach. <laughs> Frankie, this is a sad-looking animal, and I know that Scotty is oh, going to be... Uh -oh. Harris. Mrs. Harris told me you had my beautiful dog in here. And I... I... What is that horrible monstrosity? That horrible monstrosity is your beautiful dog. What happened to her? She used to have hair on top of her head and all along the top of her shoulders. 
Now she has it hanging from her chin and under her stomach. Turn her upside down. She'll be as good as new. <laughs> I should have known better than to leave her here with you two maniacs. Come, Madam Bovary, we're going home. Daddy will pick you up. I can't budge her. Ramley, you put too much glue on her stomach and she's stuck to the floor. Pull a little harder, Scotty. Well... Oh, oh, you poor dog. But don't worry. We'll get back at those two right now. Now, wait a minute, Scotty. Wait a minute. Take it easy. Don't sick that dog on us. Dog nothing. I'm going to bite you myself. Oh, wait a minute. Don't roll yourself. I can explain. I didn't mean to. Scotty, stop chewing on my leg. Take off your guard, you coward. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. But right now, our Rexall family druggist has a customer. What's the name of that Rexall antacid you sold me a little while back? You must mean Bismarex, ma'am. Bismarex, that's it. I don't think I've ever found faster relief for acid indigestion. Well, that's because Bismarex works like a team in a relay race. Like a relay race? What on earth do you mean? Well, the carefully balanced ingredients in Bismarex vary in the time required for solubility so that each one works in sequence, like a four-man relay race. I get it. One ingredient starts in where the other leaves off. That's it. The first man, or ingredient, promptly relieves the heartburn that comes from food fermentation in the stomach. The next one races to neutralize hyperacidity. The third one eases gastric distress. And the finished man leaves a soothing, protective covering for irritated stomach membranes. Well, no wonder Bismarex gives such fast relief. Well, ma'am, that kind of quality applies to all of Rexall's 2,000 or more drug products. And that's why 10,000 family druggists will tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. <laughs> Friends, this is Phil Harris, and right now, I'm going to tell you about something that is very close to me. Somewhere is a youngster who needs a pal, a boy who may be fatherless or just an unhappy, unfortunate kid. Whatever the reason, the big brothers of America are ready to help, and you can help too if you're a big brother. Beginning next Sunday is National Big Brother Week. Give your own heart a warm feeling by joining up, won't you? Write Big Brothers of America, Philadelphia 3, Pennsylvania. Big Brothers of America, Philadelphia 3, Pennsylvania. Do that. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. This program was produced and directed by Paul Phillips. Included in today's cast were Gail Gordon and Stan Freeberg. Frank Remley was played by Elliot Lewis, and Julius was played by Walter Tetley. Dangerous colds often start with nothing more serious than a simple sore throat. The prompt use of MI-31, Rexall's famous mouthwash and gargle, relieves simple sore throat. Used full strength, Rexall MI-31 kills contacted germs in a few seconds, helps soothe and relieve the minor throat irritations and rawness that often precede or accompany an ordinary cold. What's more, Rexall MI-31 in the full pint bottle costs only 69 cents at any store with the orange and blue Rexall sign on the window. When you ask for it, remember, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Stay tuned for Sam Spade, then two great stars on Theater Guild on NBC.